This is RTP. This is RTP 180. Thank you so much. So hello everyone. My name is Rooney Biggers and I actually have a question for all of you and I'm gonna come back to it. What company do I work for? I, I purposely didn't put it in my intro and I'll be curious to see, besides the few people here who do know me from work and you're not allowed to answer, um, go ahead and try to figure it out by the time I get to my third slide. So what am I gonna talk about? I'm gonna talk about the importance of being a technology adjacent person. So what does that mean? Well, before I actually get into that, I'm gonna talk about myself because that seems to be a current theme and maybe you wanna know who I am. So when I was a kid, I had a very stereotypical Sri Lankan family, which meant that I was told I was become a doctor and I believe that. So went to college, thought, yep, I wanna become a doctor. So I went to UNC, was a biology and Spanish major. That lasted about six months to a year. Then just biology, got rid of the Spanish. Then decided, yeah, not so much. Let's go to law school. Did political science. Then I picked up communications to try that out for two weeks. That didn't work out either. And then finally, I chose a career because I had, basically after three years, I had enough credits to graduate, but I, ha graduate, but I had no major. So <laughs> last year, buckled down, figured out, okay, I'm gonna get my English degree, Asian studies minor. And then you might wonder, what in the world are you gonna do with that? Well, I decided to go to Japan. I taught English for two years. After that, I came back to the US and realized, yeah, job market kinda sucks. Maybe I should go back to school. So, did that, and I got my MBA. And here I am now, all these years later, as a manager. So, why am I telling you all of this? Well. I consider myself to be technology adjacent. And again, what do I mean by that? For me, the idea first of all came when I, when I was a kid and watching Star Trek. I am a geek, yes, admittedly. But watching Star Trek, the thing that always struck me was, man, everyone is so smart. They're all talking about photon torpedoes and they know all this like extra level astro science stuff that I have no idea about. And what I realized is that everyone, no matter what their role is in the show, they are either in technology doing a very technical role like engineering, or they're technology adjacent, which means that they are a consumer of energy, or they're helping to promote technology in some way. So going back to my question, anyone figure out what company I work for? Cisco, yes. So you have a winner, huh? Yeah, you're right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, re the reason why I brought it up is that what I was hoping is that someone would look at Twitter, it would take you all of three seconds looking at my Twitter profile to figure out that I tag Cisco in almost all of my stuff because I use my Twitter account almost exclusively for my work. And then to some lesser degree also for HerSpark as well, I promote HerSpark events. So I'm obviously in a very technical, tech, you know, technical company, we provide, we make the internet run as we love to say. How did I get there with an English degree and an MBA? Well, I love technology. I am technology and I, and I manage a group of engineers. And you know, kind of piggyback off of what Liz said, you know, part of it is knowing how to be a manager and knowing how to be a people person and be able to help encourage your folks to grow. But more than that, it's also having that passion and trying to you know, maybe not necessarily know all the ins and the outs of the technology, but having a good enough understanding that you can have an intelligent conversation, that you can bring your own special stuff that makes you you and makes you have your own technology or whatever expertise and bring it into the technology field. And that is so critical and so important because I guarantee you all of you could have gone on Twitter or could have done an online search and could have found out what company I work for in no time at all. And not all of you have to be in technology to do that. My eight-year-old can do that, and she's in, an eighth, she's in second grade. It's really very simple, and it's because technology has become such a huge part of our day-to-day -day life. So why should I care about this? Th there are two things I wanna bring up. So first of all, technology surrounds us. Uh, you know, 
I actually do have a smart car. I love having a smart car. If somebody wants to find it as having a software-defined car. And I will tell you that up until my drive here, the audio was not working for the last two days, and it was driving me absolutely insane. So using my limited troubleshooting technology, no, knowing the methodology that we have to use in troubleshooting, I did what anyone else would do. I Googled it. Found a couple of things. It told me, just do a scroll reset. There is no button that says scroll reset, by the way, on my car anywhere. Finally, it it I went to the other tried and true troubleshooting method, which is button mashing, and that finally worked. But you have to be somewhat technolog technologically savvy to be even able to do all that. And you need to have the right people and be technology adjacent to know have the people who can kind of guide you through and tell you, well, have you thought about this or have you brought this into the picture? Now, why does this matter to women in technology? Well, that picture is from her Sparks Information Board. We have about 70, um, about today I would say about 25% of all women in, t in technology, or 25% of all people in technology are women. That number's gone down. In 1991, it was about 39%. So we've actually, in many ways, taken steps backwards. Overall, when you talk to younger girls, they, they're about 74% who at least are interested in it. So what happens in between? Well, HerSpark, other organizations that we've heard about today, we're trying to make sure we can keep some of that 74% interested and have them actually pursue those careers. Additionally, we're companies like what I work for are trying to figure out how do we get back to that 39%. So what can you do? Here's a couple of things. Obviously working in technology helps. Other things you can do is to volunteer. HerSpark does summer summits every year. We, we look for volunteers who want to teach about something they know about. We've done two one-day workshops. One was on um, doing Python. Another one was focusing on data science. If you're interested in technology, all of us speakers here have plenty of opportunities we would love to sign you up for. Connect with girls. I, like I mentioned, I have two daughters. They are very precocious. They're not both into technology. To go back to the question that someone asked earlier, if, you know, having sons, having children who might not be aligned. If they're not, they're not. However, if they are, find out what they're interested in. My kids might not necessarily care about all technology, but my daughter loves Minecraft, so I'll let her play it. Find a way to bring them in and at least have the, the enough intelligence about a subject that they don't have to be that expert and necessarily go into that STEM career, but at the very least give them the, the skills they need so they can become technology adjacent. And then overall, really what I would say is, you know, make those connections. If you know some, if you're in technology, help other people get into technology, share your contacts, be very giving and open with what you have and what you know, and that helps to bring it all full circle. So thank you. <laughs>